So uh, welcome to uh, the first ever Cadden Heads podcast here. Uh, my name's Cameron. Uh, I'm joined with Jenna and Grant. Um, and we thought we'd try something a bit different tonight. Normally with our releases, we would do a special online tasting. Um, but because we're starting to get the season where the seasons where a lot of people might be travelling with work, a lot of festivals are on, we're getting to a point when the release comes out that we won't all be together. So the idea came about, I think it was actually Jenna, who thought we should maybe try a podcast. So we'll pre-record it, do it in a more relaxing atmosphere, pretend that the cameras aren't here. Also means that we can edit things too, um, which probably most likely is there's a lot, there's, there's times where we do say things that we probably shouldn't. No, it's really words. So this is the first time we've tried it. What we're going to do is we're going to speak about the latest original collection release, the the brand new Enigma release and range and what it's about. And we'll be talking about a lot of other things, Cat and Heads too, um, including our upcoming event, Cat and Heads in the Courtyard. And also we're doing it in our brand new refurbished tasting room. So we did a little bit of a jiggery pokery with the, the furniture. So we've slightly <laughs> changed it, but uh, I think we've managed to get it in a way that suits everyone. We'll find out in the morning. We'll we will we'll find out in the morning. We'll back together, yeah, definitely. So, um, I think... Well, I suppose the whole point tonight is to also discuss the whiskey that you're saying, so why not start off with a dram? So, first one we're going to pour is the Royal Brackla. I'm just going to be passing the bottle around here. Excuse me. If anybody notices that Grant isn't drinking, uh, he is actually still on call from the fire brigade. <laughs> and organised as it can heads. This release is not yet bottled, so we are using our own samples because we're getting ahead of and That's a, a great the starting tanks. point regarding the discussion, what goes involved with the manning process and getting the samples before it bottling, mm -hmm. I suppose. Well, even even doing this, as we're, talk, well, we're trying to do it in a way that we would do it normally in the office, um, except with less bad language. <laughs> um, that when maybe the, the, the sort of process that people don't see is that we have to get the preparation done, we have to get the things like the tasting notes done. I think when you just see the final product, you don't see all the work that goes into prior to the, the selection, to the to the, the, the guys in production doing all the marrying and the reductions and a, actually getting the samples for us to do as well. And then we have to get all the, the, the tasting notes done and all the, the, the marketing out to especially like stuff like whether it be Grant who looks after the shops in the UK or Jenna who looks after the export markets. It's where we also use um, some other colleagues like Nathan and Carly who are hiding in the corner just now. Um, Off camera. We'll try and get them on camera at some point. Um, uh, but it, it, there is a lot of things that, that, that go on behind the scenes, I think, that, that we, we never really seem to show. Um, and these, <laughs> this looks completely unprofessional, but it's... It's we are kind of getting more advanced in this, and we don't have the labels ready. The bottling's not done yet, so this is what we would normally do. This is exactly how we do it regularly. Yeah, from the turnover from get you know getting the samples organised, uh, checking the age. Obviously, this one's original collection, forty six percent. But even doing the authentic collection, cast strength, it's like okay, get the regaze done. How many bottles we've we got to get from it and the cask and stuff. Even the volume we've got to get for the original collection. How many labels do you need to order in and stuff? So there's a lot to it. And there's also the kind of the, the bit everybody loves the pricing element, you know, where, <laughs> where, where you've got to look it out for what the duties will cost, the tax, etc., and um, what we paid for the for the, the casks as well, and, and what kind of we try and do a fair retail price. But we're not going to speak about the pricing no, too no. much because as well, and that's more for your side here. It's like when you're picking the whiskies, is to get a nice range of different ages, cast types to suit different markets as well because yes everybody loves pe sherry whiskies but it's not just about bottling pe sherry whiskies it's about you know experimenting and putting different cast types on the market and this range here in front of us is actually does demonstrate that we will talk through all the different cast styles we're, we're doing but you know it's like a lineup yeah definitely and this one um it's the first time we've done a royal brack on the original place i think as well yes, yeah. um so this one 11 years old and a uh, Jenna, you can know the cast types of this one. It's uh, it's been in Fino since March twenty twenty two, so around a year. Um, and it's it's 
new to me. This is actually my first time getting to taste this one. So, if we're doing any re-racking, the, the casks are generally in bourbon beforehand. Um, and it went into fresh pheno, and it'd been in there for around one year. Uh, but it's pretty fresh on the nose. Uh, quite often with some of the pheno ones, I get quite a drying finish, but I don't think this one's very dry at all. It's, it's actually very well balanced. It's just made a nice addition to, to Royal Brackler. Brackler's one of those distilleries, it kind of goes under the radar, but mm -hmm. generally the, the spirit's quite good from it. Um, I think between the pheno as well, Fino is not going to be too overpowering as well. It's going to, as you said, it can be quite a dry and kind of lighter style sherry, and it can have more complements it rather than trying to dominate it too much. Yeah, there's a perfect balance of your distillery characteristics coming through, as well as the Fino. You know, there's that sweetness element there, and you've got all that kind of white grapes, white chocolate, and stuff. Yeah, it all works really well together. Well, it's it's a good drinking whiskey as well, but there's a lot behind it too. It's not just a case of um, I think. When we talk about certain certain ranges that we've got, the likes of the original collection, it's the we do reduce it to forty six percent, but that's all done for flavour. You know, um, one of the, the things we do see a lot is that maybe oh, it, it's reduced to try and maybe get more out of it, or it's reduced to, to try and save money. It's not really the case when we're dealing with the amounts that we're talking about. Um, I think there's a bit of a misconception as well. I mean, even. If you look at something that's about 55% alcohol and something 46%, there's really only about three pounds difference in duty. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, not, it's not there's a huge yeah, amount that's... The volume yeah. reducing it. You know, it's, it's not a no, huge volume. No. It's not like, oh, I'm going to get half a pallet extra reducing yeah. it for a second. It's not like it's, it's, if you're uh, The duty-wise as well, if, if we're, only produce, we're still producing small volume of stock, though we're fat and cast together with this one to create a bigger volume to distribute this around the world. If we add up, if we're saving a pound in duty because we've reduced it to forty six percent on a case of whiskey or whatever, a few pounds, if you add that up on the the actual out final outturn that we get, we're not making that much money. Yeah, yeah. It'd be different if you're doing like thousands of bottles. We, we do it more. It's all about flavour, and anything when we are doing the, the preparation for it, we're, we're trying to find out casks to do it. It genuinely always is that we'll try to cast strength first. We'll try it at um, the lower strength. If it does taste better at cast strength, we, we, we don't bottle it at 46. Yeah, but that's you know, it, it's, We would have it really, yeah. where we do it for a club bottling or, you know, we we might have it for a special edition range. You know, it's it, it's not done just for the sake of doing it. It's always done for a purpose. I've, I've heard you many, many times in the office and you've tasted something at cast strength, putting the, the batons together. Springbank 11 year old, I think, was one of them. Yeah. Correct me. You tasted it, cast strength, Finley was there, and as soon as you reduced it to 46%, it was perfect. It, perfect. Um, yeah, it, it, it was. Because um, you weren't actually sure if it would be going through or not. Because <laughs> when we first tried it, it was very closed. It, was, it wasn't actually, it, it wasn't, there was not much going on with it. It was too high mm -hmm. in alcohol. But the actual like, reduction, then, it brings out the kind of, it brings out that fruitiness when it, with it too. I don't get me wrong, it can be the, the opposite too, but yeah, we've, we've, we've tried something, we've reduced it, and it's not worked. And, and It's just lacking in body, and some, sometimes the water just just, just too much. Mm -hmm. But that's the important part for the, the marrying strength, and more recently, visitors we've been having to Campbelltown have uh, been taken up into the bottling hall and, and shown them the big vat that we've got. We'll pour all the cask into this big vat, we reduce it to 50%, just because we need the water to integrate with that as well, so the final product and the marrying strength at around 50%, you know, they need to get to know each other, and that's an important step, so it's got to be tasted at that strength. Um, it's all dependent on the markets as well, because, you know, yes, doing a cast strength gives a drink the option of adding water, but there is some markets that do, and, you know, people are newer drinking whiskey, if we're trying to get you know, this people into whiskey and try a cast strength whiskey straight away, it might be too powerful for them, but a 46% whiskey, you know, just get into the whiskey idea and then experiment with different cast styles, different distilleries and stuff as well. So they great for doing some trade shows without the UK and stuff as well. The thing is, I'll, I'll drink different styles of whiskey. That's I think there's got to be a way that there's not one... It's not all one, if you know what I mean. It's not a case of it's only cast strength, it's, all, it's only 46, it's only 40%. There's some really good whiskies at 40%, there's some really good whiskey at 43, 46... 40, 50, whatever some people's styles are. 
we go 46 is the optimal kind of drinking mm-hmm. strength mm-hmm. or cast strength, you know, um, for natural. But that's the thing. I, I don't always think a cast strength is always great. I don't always think sometimes you want a cast strength. It just depends. And I think if you kind of just put yourself in one hole where it's just I only like one style, I think you're depriving yourself of quite a lot of, of, of other whiskies that I think are actually quite good in the market. Now, again, um, it, it, it's it's all done to the kind of flavour behind it. And I think it's never judged on strength. Mm-hmm. No, I think well, we've got the authentic collection. We've got the original collection. And that's the difference between the two. If we bottled this at cast strength and put all our whiskies at cast strength, or products at cast strength, then they would just all be authentic collection. There'd be no difference between the two. So it's finding the right products and the right composition yeah. at the right strength to go through for bottling. Definitely. No, as we've discussed, I have a nose of this one here, but it does become a uh, more sweetness in the palate. Mm-hmm. You've got that kind of manuka honey, sort of, you know, that sweetness there coming yeah, through. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of the, the bourbon notes coming through as well. There's just a nice soft almond. It's quite a salty kind of finish as well, kind of almost that kind of drying kind of you know style as well. Um, but again, it, it's got a lot behind it. It's not just a case of it, it's. It's not just overpowered by the cask. It's got that nice balance as you kind of that's, pull it earlier on. That's what I was saying. When we're doing these cask part maturations, you know, there's all these legal, well, there's no legal definition of what you call a finish and stuff. But it's nice to see how we're maturing. And obviously, you've got to keep an eye on them as well if we do it. When you're doing independent bottling, you, you, you've got to rely on each individual cask. It's not that we're producing it, the, the whiskey, so you don't get that same um, consistency. You know, you... We've got different styles of, of whiskey, different cast types. So you do need to keep trying and trying um, and be careful with it as well because you never know that maybe sometimes it's ready to bottle, sometimes you maybe if you've changed cast types, has it worked right? Um, you have an idea of something that worked, but even if you've got the, the, the greatest cast type, you know, you might put it in a fresh sherry, you know, and you know that you, you, it's worked before, sometimes something can go wrong with that cask, which is fine if you're... A distillery and you've got one or two casks that are, that are not so great but when that's ones that we've purchased and then you know, there's a lot of money involved with it too that if something doesn't go right with it you know that's quite a big issue to have because then you need to purchase replacements and stuff for it too it's kind of what i like about what what, what you've been doing a lot of the cask management and the ex- experimenting with everything though you've probably built up a good idea of what might happen. No, I'm just winging, always it. Happen. <laughs> just winging it completely, Jenna. That's you, know, um, <laughs> you, know, you don't always know it's going to turn out yeah, that way. And sometimes you have to backtrack. If you're, you know, if you're buying in parcel of cast, say 10, 15, or 20 casks, and they're all matured in bourbon, and you've got to put a bit of variety of variation in there. Yes, they're all pretty good bourbon matured whiskies, but you know, putting some in Fino, putting some in Oloroso, just to vary it up a bit as well, it, it, it works. So I've got I've got examples of something that doesn't work, <laughs> um, but it, it is something you've got to try and give a variation. I think that's the variety is a spice of life, and I think that's what we've got to try and do with with everyone and every type. And, and certain distilleries whiskies are better in some some casks compared to others. You know, it's it, you know with with bourbon styles. You know, that's my favourite kind of style of whiskey, but it's a lot of people like cherries, a lot of people like wines, a lot of people like port. Um, Finding but, something for everyone. As, as well, you said to me not all that long ago, what have you tasted recently? Um, what, what have you been liking? And uh, we've got that amount of different casts from regions all over Scotland. We've got the casts available here to re rack into, and it's it's just having that chance to go, oh, I quite like something mm. PE in a, in a white wine cask. We try something like that, so anything available. And, I mean, hopefully you did, maybe did something, I don't know, but... <laughs> <laughs> there could be something there somewhere, I'm not sure. Well, uh, there's an oyster, well, you know, oyster. we've got that mm-hmm. option. We've maybe come across something and we can play around and see if we can... Pete, Pete seems to work well with red wine cast, but we, we, we might have stole that idea from our neighbours. <laughs> we that, <laughs> that good old day. But I think you're really... Yeah, the first whiskey there, yeah. well, back with Crack and Tram. Well, I think it's well, like, with what we're doing here... Um, it's actually quite good to get together because we haven't the last five six weeks you know with people being on holiday there's been people traveling with work you know new releases and whatnot that we, we sometimes we pass by quite a lot and there's a lot of work going on 
um, at Cat and Heads 2. Um, we're quite known for buying a property. Um, <laughs> there was a comment made by somebody that uh, they wouldn't like to play play as a monopoly because uh, we buy all the buildings. Um, but a uh, but that comment, actually. Well, probably, sorry, <laughs> but uh, we're always kind of moving on. But it's good to kind of like try and get down. And... It's been a, more and more people looking down at Camas, so you'll see there's huge development within the company. We're always looking at ways of expanding, employing new people. And that's one of the reasons, yeah, we're sitting in the bar just now, you know, the tasting room. Uh, we've got a lovely blending lab next door as well. There's, you know, we're all thinking, okay, what else can we do to attract people to Camelton? Uh, it's not just about us as well as the other things we do in Camelton, but uh, a few. No, just about Camelton. That's all it's about, <laughs> nothing else. Well, I think even the fact that we're, we're sitting here just slightly after hours because um, we, could, we couldn't come in early in the morning with the construction work going on outside in the courtyard. Mm -hmm. uh, Oh, is that in celebration of Cadness? It's a good segue. <laughs> well, uh, it's, it's beginning to take shape. I was, there's always this vision. Neil gives us a, a, an idea of what's going to happen and it, it sees through and I'm always a wee bit unsure, but it's it taking shape now. Taking shape, yeah. uh, I can never see the end product until I'm at the end. Yeah. I've not got that good an imagination, but um, I'm looking forward to that being completed because we've got drilling and hammering and... Mm. A lot of noise. Well, on. Even this room here, if you remember back to a year ago, mm -hmm. you know, like this was basically a, 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 it was almost a dumping ground, but not because it used to be my office many years ago. Yeah, it's <laughs> a dumping ground. <laughs> and it used to be some stairs here, it used to go up to the office, um, we used to have the kind of the, the gantry at the back, but obviously, um, for the last couple of years, we've been trying to do the, the work, but it's just there's been other jobs getting done as well, but the the maintenance team have done a, a brilliant job with it, and yeah, all kinds of Stephen. Oh, definitely mm -hmm. Stephen, John, um, Charlie, Charlie. Davy, mm -hmm. um, absolute brilliant stuff. Indeed, I suppose we'll introduce the uh, whiskey number two as one of discussing things as well. So this is a oh, good point. this is the first of the Enigma bottles we're going to sample tonight. And this is the, the what what one's just that? Enigma. Enigma. Okay. And this is a 25 year old blend. Uh, well, it's just cast strain, 41.2% alcohol. So it is cast strain. So I think, as well, we should probably explain the purpose of the new new range as well. Yeah. Um, so the Enigma, uh, we've got a. We've got a here's, you know, here's one. I there we go. Earlier. So I, I, think <laughs> I think we've actually will have a close up of it too. Some of it's a bit of a throwback too, and some of it is is for a purpose. Um, some of you may be well aware that when we're purchasing cast nowadays, that a lot of the, the the more modern purchases that we can make from certain distilleries, you're not allowed to use the names of particular distilleries. Um, sometimes you might have agreements where it might be a secret space side or an unnameable Isla or an Orkney distillery that's ninety nine percent Highland Park, but you can't name it as Highland Park. <laughs> Um, so we have a range called the Authentic Collection, which is single cast, cast strength, nameable distilleries. Um, we have a World Whiskies range, again, single cast, cast strength, um, which you can name the distilleries with. The original collection, 46% larger quantities, um, named distilleries. But there is a gap in our ranges, you know, like... Um, that we could do have a bit more fun and a bit more freedom to, to put these kind of anomalies in, mm -hmm. you know. So this is where we come up with the Enigma range. And um, it's also going to be in green bottles, which is a bit of a throwback to the old style. Definitely throwback to the old. Remember, I'm oh, sure a lot of you will remember the old screen printed green bottles that Cadenas used to produce in the sort of 90, well, 80s, 90s. They were cracking, yeah. absolutely. Just really good. I mean, nod to history, but also keeps that Enigma alive, the mystery alive. So Enigma, unusual, mysterious. Not gonna, gonna give you a wee bit of information, but um, as much as we possibly can, because as, as Carmen was saying there, we're we're not always going to know exactly what's in these bottles. There will be in future ones, especially with it's the kind of the two that we've got uh, today are one's a blend, one's a blended a, vat, a blended malt. Sorry, then if there is one, it's from a single malt distillery. We will we we won't give away too much just now, but there will be ways to find out. How to work it out, but um, 
we will yeah. get yeah. more information of that in the future. I'm quite excited about this release. Uh, I've announced it to the international markets already. Um, so the, and the two products have been released in September as well, and they seem excited too. And it just gives us something a wee bit more to speak about. Um, you know that there is this mysterious um, edge that's got mm -hmm. to it. We don't know what colour it is until you've opened it and yeah. had a dram of it. Um, it's going to be a cast strength. So this one's just about 40 percent cast strength. That's, that's just yeah, the way it is. Uh, and this one's actually one of our largest vatans that we've put together. As far as I know, I think this is the largest fat and cadenates I've ever put together. Mm -hmm. um, so on the, on the label, it does say 5,850. It is its natural cast strength, um, which is quite low. Um, but it's 25 years it old. It is 25 years old. We, this, was purchased I, in blend, wasn't it? this was actually purchased pre-blended many years ago. So we have absolutely no idea what's in it, which leads to Enigma. Um, we have our own, people might ask why don't we put it in our own range of blends, but when we do our own range of blends, we tend to know what we put into it. We've got a kind of composition like Seven stars. Stuff. Seven yeah. stars, yeah. Um, the old healing winds and stuff Pitaki like that. Side. Pitaki sides. Moidarps. Moidarps too. Oh, ah, yeah. You're, you're probably still about with the Moidarp. So it is something, because we didn't really know what was in it, it, it that was the kind of um, mystery behind it too. You put out a good thing too, Jenna. There, babe, a good point. Sorry, that the you don't see it until you open it, mm -hmm. and it stops that kind of pretense of looking at something, look, judging something by its colour too. Darker whiskey is perceived as better quality, but it's not always the case. You know, it's yes, yeah, so people are automatically just drawn to the colour of whiskies and labels and stuff like that. And we're all about you know the product itself. We know the whiskey's good, and it's you know, trusting us and. Trying it for yourself, and well, well, yeah. if anyone's ever done a, a cabinet warehouse tasting with myself, I tend to do it blind. I love teasing people, uh, and more because you, like um, you can judge a whiskey depending on what it's on on the label, whether it's the distillery, the cast type, the strength, or the age. I like to have a wee bit of fun up there, I'm, and I'm yeah. just back from the warehouse actually, and um, I'll not mention exactly what it is, but. It, gave a dram and uh, a gentleman said to me afterwards, oh, I don't drink that distillery. That's, uh, that's <laughs> and he was so annoyed at himself. I said, but you've enjoyed it. And it, as it's point proven, yeah. uh, you know, this is what it's all about. Said, but I don't drink that one. <laughs> yeah, sure, a few of you will remember we, uh, on the audience tonight that the, the pub tasting we done the last year, when we done the, the union and everybody thought it was our big. Yep, yeah. Man, that's, that, that was last year, yeah. Um, I think that's one, and even at the end, people would come up and say, yeah. "No, nah, you've got those mixed up." I went, "No, that's Brazilian whiskey, five-year-old Brazilian whiskey, five -year -old Brazilian five -year -old whiskey. Whiskey. against a twenty-eight-year-old dark rig." And even with this one alone, it's blended Scotch whiskey, which I get, I I don't dismiss blended Scotch whiskey. Um, twenty-five years old, so the minimum whiskey within this blend would be twenty-five yeah. years old, but it's got body. It's got. It's got energy around it. It's not lacking. It's not meat. Yeah. It's not too mellow. It's got a lot of flavour behind it, even with the, the sort of lower strength of it. Which mm -hmm. even it's natural. So what is it? It's forty one point four. Forty one point four. So it's pretty low in alcohol, but it's got a lot of flavour behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, it's got a nice kind of sweetness, kind of fruitiness behind it. That, that, that it's quite an elegant whiskey. It is. You know, it's one you can sit back, enjoy, and just you know, just sip away at it. And there's just, but it keeps on developing the palate. You know, it's. Yeah, Yes, it's got maturity complexity to it, but it's so, so smooth and boorish. Some of you might remember, well, just release one for the Edinburgh shop. So this is a sister cast to, we've done a single cast for the Edinburgh shop exclusive for the, the festival just now. So. I think a lot of people questioned, uh, I was speaking to Carly about this, and how can a blend be a, sister, uh, a single cask? Yeah. So it's a single cask bottling that was already pre-blended into that cask and we bought one cask of it. <laughs> that's, good, that's, that's exactly it, yeah. That's it. Look, whereas this was several casks and uh, but one of them was taken away to be... I and a lot of us too, that, um, it, because they're, they're coming out at a very similar time, some of this was picked ages ago, mm -hmm. you know, and some of it was, it's just a coincidence that, you know, um, oh, that's also coming out on about the same time. Uh, but they actually, even though they're, they're this they are one's a single cask and this is a, a, a vatting of, of more of the cask. They're quite different. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, they are quite different. You we'll know. have um, seven stars back on the market, uh, like the R seven star plane. So it's popularity wise just went mad. Yeah, uh, and it's out for a while, yeah. so it's, it's back out in the market from August. It's also a good segue <laughs> that. Um, if you like our blends and you want to try and make your own blend, oh, we actually we actually yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> selling points now. Um, we've got a brand new a uh, blending lab uh, in between the tasting room and the Cadnet shop, where you can come in and there's eight different cast types. You get to try and make your own blend, and the feedback's been tremendous so far. And I think what's been good is a lot of people have actually tried it and they've went, "That's actually more difficult than I realise." There's yeah. an art to it. There, 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 there is, and it, it, a lot of it can be a bit of trial and error, and a, a lot of it's um, you've, you've got to do a bit of like sort of. It's not just as simple as going, oh, let's blend this and that. And, and we've talked about in the past where we've actually graded casks. Like say we're we're going to do a, oh, I think it was a, it was a space side distillery made up from a secret space side that we're doing for a special um, bottling, but we used we want to use three casks for it. And we had 10 casks of it and we graded them all. So instantly you think one, two, and three would be the best casks. But I think it was actually, and I never remember the order, but it was like three, six, and eight were actually the, the best casks put in the composition. Mm -hmm. Individually they weren't, but as part of the composition, they actually, they, they, they somehow, part of their characteristics actually worked. You know, one of them with a papery note, but it actually helped another one. Yeah, you find that, that one that's maybe not as unique or special that you'd pick as a single cast to just with the addition of another one mm -hmm. maybe with a spicier note it really brings out a lot of the flavors so and, and also the first session we had kind of when you similar to like your warehouse tasting guy and um, this person said to me how long did the tasting go and you went yeah it was really good but i, I one bit of advice because just to let you know we did not tell you the cast types no. at the beginning and no. um, you should tell us the cast types and I went, why? Because he said, well, X cast type doesn't, um, and Y cast type don't go together. And then Andrew, who was working in the shop, went, well, well you've picked them both together. And the guy was like, oh, right, okay. <laughs> so therefore you go, well, actually they do work, but if you knew them beforehand, you wouldn't have actually tried them. So that's the way I've done the blending session is that, you know, you've got to mix them in on sort of three or four casts together, types together to get your 70 or worse. So, uh, there is that wee bit, and if we start saying, no, okay, that's all also, and that, well, that's the peaty one, you're like, oh, I like peaty whiskey, can I just make a bottle of that? Yeah. No, you've got to play a bit and make your own blend. And I think, I think we did that deliberately, didn't we? We, we? When we did do the, the kind of trials with it, there was a lot of trials to get done as well. Um, and, and we actually did that, I'm quite impressed, we've taken our time with that one. Yeah, and Jess did a lot of good work with that too, where we got everything kind of, this is how we should maybe work it like basically the sort of the what's the, one, the, the the routine not the routine but the procedure yeah yeah the, that's the kind of idea uh -huh. and one of the things w was well, if we just do that will they come in and if they know it's a px and a, sh and a peak cask they'll, they'll just put it together you know so having did the minimum of three casks and i think a lot of people have been surprised that they've not just went and used a certain sherry or a, the peat one all the time. And we've got, got to find it first. Don't well, that's, that's <laughs> true. Yeah. Don't forget to put a picture on the label as well. That, that's very true. Um, and you look ten times better than you did in the way in. <laughs> <laughs> that was also something that we, we trialled with, and Jenna was at the beginnings of that too. But um, I don't know if we can actually put a picture up of that one or. Maybe, like, maybe, like maybe not. <laughs> we'll see if we're allowed to put a picture. I look 20 years older. <laughs> well, we'll see tomorrow if Jenna allows us to edit that one. <laughs> I've shown a few people recently uh, that, we, that were on the blending session and they were like, that doesn't look like yours. Like, thank you. <laughs> looks much better. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can, we can pull. Pull. <laughs> well, use Grant's one of the, the latest filter. Caricature, yeah. caricature. Uh, alongside the one that we okay. rejected. Well, I'm sure when you get, get this twice one, it is yeah. superb. Um, and yeah. it, and I also should point out that this range will be going internationally as well. Sometimes uh, we might have a single cask involved with it. It's not just going to be, you know, big vattings. It's, it's, a lot can be single malts. It can be single casks. Um, sometimes it could 
there's no end to it. We can maybe do it at castings. We can do it. At... It'll fit in wherever yeah. it crops up, I suppose. Whenever Carmen picks one of these unusual oddities, and whether it's a single cast that goes alongside the authentic collection, or if we're going to bat stuff together, it can get released internationally. So it'll fit in accordingly, I suppose. Well, I think as well. No rhyme or reason. <laughs> I mean, we have been getting a lot of, of casks from distilleries that you don't normally see as much anymore, but you can't name. And I think one of them, um, it's been quite, that we got, was um, Ben Romick. I can't remember the name of it, actually, yes. So, nice to acquire some Ben Romick. Recently, we've acquired some Bowmore that we can't name. We've obviously got Island Parks we can't name. We've got Lagavulin we can't name. So, these are all like, really good distilleries, and these are all going to be part of the... Is that part of the thing that you know people are conscious is now about you know securing casts and the price of casts? Well, over the last day or so, you're saying that at least you're getting offered these casts. Getting offered a lot of casks. Mm -hmm. Hey, I better not say which still it is, but one of the main ones, and we got offered a pretty good rate today. Um, a big giant M, you know. So it's good to see, you know, like that there are some of these things open up because. You never know. There's always a, a kind of worry that, oh, is there going to be a, 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 are people closing up? In the last 18 months, okay, the price is still pretty high. Price is high. Uh, we're in a position, though, that we're not going to be buying anything to sell instantly, though. But in kind of like five, years, six, so. seven years' time, you know, uh, and we've got good stocks to do is up until that point of, of certain products, too. But it's good to see those distilleries. You know, Bowmore, I've not seen in a while. You know, like, you know, years ago, you'd have probably been offered Bowmore almost weekly. You know, <laughs> um, I mean, back when I started, it was like things were priced according to age and strength. Yeah. It doesn't matter that it's still. Yeah, like, uh, that's why times have changed. Big still, cash were traded with all things age and strength. So. We've got original liters of alcohol and regauge liters of alcohol mm -hmm. now as well, cropping up more often. Oh. I like this one. Glen Elgin. Uh, is this the Glen Elgin? This is the Glen Elgin, yeah. 13 year old Glen Elgin. What did we put it in? Because I can't remember. <laughs> Manzanilla. <laughs> was this in the Manzanilla from March yeah. 2022? Uh, we had the Glen Elgin a few releases ago, maybe third release, original collection release. The old all bourbon, bourbon cast, yeah. and I loved it. Yeah, it was, it was a crack. Up. Fruity a really bourbon, vanilla. Bold space yeah. side. And this, this is actually um, sitting alongside that. But Glen Elgin's. Good spirit. Glen Elgin has good spirit. And I went, actually, when we were doing the tastings, it was aware I was tasting at the whiskey school. And I, did, I do them sometimes. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, what well, was actually somebody at the tasting once said to me, Oh, Glen Elgin, I always think it's quite an, an oily, kind of thick spirit, Glen Elgin. And they told me it's because they use the worm tubs up there as well. Now, and it, I've not actually checked if that's true, but um, it would make sense if that's the case. Mm -hmm. This is what we'll find out, that they don't use worm-tub condensers. <laughs> and we'll have to edit this bit out. But, um, There's so many distilleries, like I, I, myself anyway, like, you can't remember everything. No. And really, I, I need to worry about what we're releasing. We're doing how many products a year? What we're releasing? What cast types are in? But that, ages and that's a good thing we're doing as well, we're on about that. The... You know, your QR code is yeah. perfect for that now because... Good segue. Well, we have to introduce it because... The QR code is really good. And it's, yeah, because all these different products are coming on the market, scan the QR, QR code in the back of the label and all the information is there on the website. So similar, similar to that QR code in the back of that one, just like that. <laughs> well, we've introduced it to Enigma and Original Fiction so yeah. far. Uh, and it'll take you to, I don't know you even know if many people know about our bottle archives on our website. So we've got the brand's brand site. I didn't even know about it. <laughs> well, I, mean, I noticed the look in your eyes. That's <laughs> no, I did. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's pretty helpful. I'm on there constantly because yeah. as we were on about, you're working so far ahead and it just gives you a wee reminder. Um, we're going to be working, well, I've been speaking to Nathan a wee bit and Carly about maybe making it a wee bit more interactive, a wee bit more information on there too. So we've got a lot coming up in the future as well. I think so. And with that, like, um, it's a good point because we we used to have the information on the back labels and a lot of people wonder why we stopped. And a lot of it was because of delays 
and there was a lot of issues with maybe there were mistakes and bag of labels. And we're all human. You know, not, not from my, you know, like maybe for the printing companies maybe delay the bottling. And it, it, with the international releases, there there's so many bottles. Yeah, you know, there, it, it's not just a single cast. There is thousands of bottles, and they go to round about what, twenty markets or whatever uh, around the world, along with, with the UK too. And it, if an operation then stops. So we had to kind of make it a bit more generic, and now we're trying to find a way to give that information to. There's so many regulations now; it's just constant, one after the other, different in nearly every market. <laughs> it's just changed a lot, even in the last few years since I used to do the international markets. That a lot of your time is spent actually just getting rules and regulations. And yes, we've got so many different back labels for different markets now. It does the QR code as well. It's also helping because sometimes it happens that we might bottle the same whiskey. Same age and same strength, but several years apart. You know, and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, you can look for the operation number in the bottle, but have the QR codes, I'll bring you straight to the correct one. Mm-hmm. So I just go back to the whiskey then. There's a lot of the time, and it's probably it's my fault too, because I sometimes talk about when we do me racking, it's because the cast needs boosted. These casts were actually not too bad. It was just more to give it a l- little bit. A little bit yeah. Mm-hmm. And sometimes having ones that are actually quite good means that there doesn't need to be a huge amount of time with the re-rack. And, and the manzanilla, again, similar to the Fino, similar to Apollo Cotado, it's softer. It's mm-hmm. it's not going to be as dominant. Whereas maybe if we, if we put it, say, put it in the PX or Oloroso, that's not going to say it wouldn't be good or that, but it just maybe would be too dominant. Yeah, it complements the distillic answers there. Yeah. I know we've said that before in the other ones, but this one... It, Perfect balance. Yeah. A, a refill of La Rosa or a refill PX, maybe, but we didn't have any available at the time. You know, um, it just depends, obviously, when bottlings get done. You know, you need to get them back into liquid quite quickly before they dry out. So, but, oh, it's got a lovely, lovely nose on this one. Yeah, it's got a full, full body flavour yeah. to it as well. Yeah. I think that might be going onto the order list. And the sherry cask coming through just, just nicely. It's a distillery I, I, I look out for. I think it's a really good. Um, when you, when you talk of regions and you talk of if somebody says oh it's a space side whiskey a, a lot of people just think oh it's, it's light and fruity but it's more to it than that as well it's like your Glen Elgin's your Linkwood's your Glen Losses I think these are these are really great whiskies and don't get me enough credit um, Manic Moors um, I'm probably going to say some distilleries in the high Glen Talkers you know um, you know like uh, uh, it's yeah there might be lighter and characteristics to maybe for instance, obviously the, the Camelton whiskey or an Isla whiskey, but but you get some really good sort of fruity flavours. Well, it was my way into whiskey. I, I don't know. I, I had to discover Cadenheads in the different regions before I could discover whiskey. Mm-hmm. It was tasting spring bank being from Campbelltown was was not an introduction. Well, it was a, an introduction. Here's whiskey, but that was whiskey's whiskey for me. Mm-hmm. But finding uh, the, the different regions, it was maybe started off with some older, more mellow whiskies uh, through working in Cadenheads and finding my way around there. And then you really appreciate the different styles and that every distillery is doing in all the different regions. I mean, even I went over, like, Isla was, Isla distilleries are my favourite for a while. And mm-hmm. you think, you know, they're big, smoky, yeah. like, <clears throat> and you think, oh, why would you start there if you couldn't just start in a whiskey? But it was just because there was so much flavour. Uh, but yeah, you can move all over and you find something new all the time as well. So I, I was exactly the same. I probably went from kind of, I went more smoky, kind of sherry casks mm-hmm. to now I probably go for a, a second fill, space side <laughs> bourbon cask. You know, like yeah, now that uh, obviously depends on your mood and whatnot. But I'd probably go more for like a Glen Loss or a Glen Elgin. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> also, they're easier to get a hold of <laughs> too. But <laughs> Glen Loss is my used to, uh, go to. But that, again, there's a lot more cleanly yeah. available back then. That's another one that, that we've got stock of that we can't name um, as well. So, um, she's getting into Campbell Tums, the, the, the issue. That's well, the first whiskey I tasted. I know you've got a bottle of it, as I tell you quite often, I'm getting it. It was <laughs> 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 that Heelman, the Heelman that we bought. I left you in my way. I wish I bought a bottle back. When it, when it was released, I don't this, know why. Did that one again? Is that twice seventeen? I think it was because uh, when the first time I was like, "Wow, this is this what whiskey is?" <laughs> but, oh, Grant's foaming off there. <laughs> I thought <shoot> <laughs> 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 
But that was cracking, that one. Was it 45? 45, 43 maybe. Yeah. Just under strength. But, um, that was going to be the big mm-hmm. festival bottle, and then the week before the festival, we found out it was like 38% yeah, or yeah, something. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. But no, that was a, an eye-opener. It's like, oh, right, I really loved that one. It was cracking. It was and there we go, 7 o'clock. <laughs> Is that your people going off? Uh, 7 o'clock test call. Uh, every night at 7 o'clock, my pager. I just gives a week no matter what time it is. <laughs> just for the <laughs> Grant is also in the fire brigade too, so. Uh, Volunteer fire brigade. So he, it's, sometimes in the office, we'll just be sitting there and his pager will go off and he'll have to run out of the office. Um, and we all take a heart attack and grant Because this people is really loud. But he, he did pre-warn us that his every every night at seven o'clock it goes off. And so does his phone evidently <laughs> as well. <laughs> so this is a where we're we going to Glen Burgie. Another good space side distillery as well. Yeah. This one is in Tony Port. This one's got a bit of an explanation to do as well. Oh, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> let Jenna do this one, maybe? Well, the, the one time I actually spent a bit of time in researching <laughs> the casks and it, it was going on and on and on, and this, I was even saying to you in the office, what have you done with this one? <laughs> so I found out a basically 13-year-old whiskey, but it's been it's maybe its first 10 years in, I don't 10 years in bourbon before we re-racked it into fresh port casks uh, for around two years um, but I believe the story is and you'll correct me if I'm wrong that um, it's maybe just overpowering ever so it, it was maybe getting a little bit too much port it was coming on nicely but it was maybe not ready to bottle at the time so we thought maybe giving it another year or just I think just over a year back into a uh, bourbon casks it was just to try and mellow it out slightly and we've done similar things in the past where we've done like almost a secondary re ranking. Um, there's a famous one we did it with the the Kilkerm, Kilkerm, yeah, um, ten year old sets, yeah. And it's something that we've done a few times, uh, just to try and because you want it's given the element of port, and we thought, do you know what? It, it's given a good element of the port, um, but if we keep it going, I think it's just going to dominate it too much. But putting it back into bourbon, bourbon. slowed it down. Yeah. yeah, which made it, made it Jenna's life quite difficult when actually <laughs> trying to make product sheets. <laughs> How to describe it? Um, yeah, we've got the, the, the DMS, which I'm not all that great on anyway. <laughs> don't don't slay to don't slay the systems. <laughs> no, it works. <laughs> I, it's actually if anything, it's been good for me because I, I actually figured out how to use it properly. And then working the story back from the cast. So basically, I started with the the cast number that we've got now from 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 the casks being put in uh, married together and back into the warehouse until bottling. I started with that number. And then I worked my way back just to see the full story from from when we purchased it. Okay, so it was quite interesting. Carly will probably not agree because she she had me every two two seconds going, oh, I opened up a can of worms. <laughs> I'll agree with it too because you kept asking me, ah, oh, Jenna, done. <laughs> <laughs> but I think and you said it beforehand. It's a good point to actually bring up and when talking about when we're doing me racking it. We're actually still keeping an eye on the on the product. It's shown that we're keeping an eye on the quality. That we have to kind of keep on top of these things to then go. Do you know what? It's not just about making it as sporty as possible. It's bringing it back a bit, and it, and it genuinely has brought it back slightly. Um, you've still got the port. It's still, the port is, the port is, yeah. you know, and we knew that was going to be the case, but it's just slightly brought it back. The, the sort of the bourbon cask. Um, it was a refill bourbon cask as well that we put it into. Has actually brought it back. So you're going to tell me it's the first fill, wasn't it? <laughs> no, I think it was. A no, I mean, it, was it was refilled bourbon. Yeah. Um, that previously had spring back in, I believe. Oh, oh, right. oh, oh, I did take a wee note of that one. Do you know what? I actually forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, so it was a, a bourbon X spring bank casks. Um, but uh, you can you can definitely get the port off. But I think it's port- important to note it or, or discuss it because otherwise if we said this was finished in port because it's the predominant mm. flavour within the dram, people might think, well, has it been finished for three years? So completely overpowering, it could completely overpower the Glenburgie, but it, the the last final around a year, just over a year, brought the character back. Um, 
And I think I've been in the egg spring bank caster that I completely remember the, <laughs> the, the egg. Oh, that coastal one. <laughs> so that saltiness is going to... Oh, has it made much difference? I'm not too sure. I'll be honest with you, it probably hasn't made a huge... Mm -hmm. And we've done ones where we put them into like egg spring bank casks, a uh, certain whiskies that we've done ones into X long roll. We've even put ones into X hazel burn. A uh, oh, I can't even remember which ones we put into X hazel burn. Well, there was the there's older Glen Farkless or secret space side casks <laughs> that we've put into X hazel burn. I think they're about twenty years old, and it's that way where there were there were bourbon casks and a uh, there were. Just needing a little bit more. The cast of wind was a bit tired. But if you stick them into something a bit too powerful, it might take away. But the hazel burn, I think, would, which is to try and sort of give it a little boost, but not over dominate it as well. Um, so we'll see how they're getting on. I actually forgot about those until the other day. That's the, the wonders of whiskey and, you know, maturing different cast types. There was that good old, I, I mention this one quite often, the Craig LK13. That had been in the PE cast. cast yeah. You know, PT cast, yeah. yeah. It was it was good, but it's then deceiving surprising whiskies that you go, oh wow, yeah. Do you remember we got that. we got the, 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 the samples in the office, and I thought the guys had taken the wrong sample. Oh, they've taken a Khalil or something here. Remember trying that peat, and then we had to go back, and it, it was obviously when the Khalil was filled, it was it wasn't as it done it. It was it was from the original cask. It was put in to an ex PE cask and. You know, working with our, our sister company, Springbank, we know that they would never, ever fill unpeated whiskey and unpeated casks either. So, so these things can happen. Um, I think that's going to be quite a popular whiskey, this one, too. It's, got, it's again, it's a good drinking whiskey. There's lovely fruity flavours to it. It's that porty, winey note to it. It's got a creamy or oily nose. The, the, the sweetness is really coming through from the port as well. Um, I'm really enjoying this one. Coincidentally, we did uh, just bottled recently at the Ruby Port, Glen Burgie, in the authentic collection. And it's very different. A Ruby Port's would be a, it's not, the, the port's not in it, the cask is long, it's it's more of a sort of sweeter, sort of fruity, or more strawberry kind of like, uh, whereas the Tawny Port's got more of a kind of nutty, kind of caramel uh, type characteristics behind it. That's something we've done, just educational wise, is trying the port side by side, but mm. actual port, what is, you know, difference in that? Well, yes, over the years I've tried toy port and a ruby port, but sit side by side, probably not very often, mm -hmm. but trying to influence, okay, and what is that going to bring to the whiskey? Yep. It's it interesting. And then they're, they're both good whiskies in their own right, but they're both very different. Yeah. Definitely getting a Springbank influence. <laughs> <laughs> People love Springbank and port. Well, maybe there is a slight smoke in this bag. No, it's that. Um, there's definitely something on the nose that's just bringing back memories for me, to be honest. I can't quite put my finger on it. I find that a lot with the original collection because I'm enjoying them. Like, uh, Not that I don't enjoy anything else, but. You don't like the rest of the stuff, Jane, is that the thing? <laughs> They're maybe not as complex. Um, some of the cast strength ones. You might need to add a touch of water, for example, just to get it down ever so slightly. Yeah. Some are perfectly enjoyable at casting, but you, you can really just relax and enjoy a lot of these ones. I feel actually, even sometimes with, with ones like that, I'll, I'll still add water. Like, mm -hmm. um, we go back like when you first started drinking whiskey. Um, like when I first started with Canada, you got into the cast strength whiskies. And sometimes it was a bit of, I'm not adding water to it. See now, it's almost a prerequisite with me. Yeah, like, I'll have a little sip to try with, and then I'll, I'll try it with water. Yeah. Um, There's no reason not to. Uh, I always find uh, there's this sort of deep running theme that because it's an independent bottling, like you would add maybe a touch of water to uh, a distillery owned bottling, mm -hmm. uh, but because it's an independent bottling, there you know, because they bottled it forty six or because they bottled it cast strength, people are almost scared to mm -hmm. add a little bit of water. I don't think we should, but you should just drink it the way you enjoy it. Yeah, and I take it all, that's all. Yeah, well, that's, you, you, you want to do small amounts at a time. You've got the option there. The option's available to you. You've a good hand if you're doing it for the glass as well. It's, <laughs> it's a bit shaky for that one, I think. <laughs> it's amazing that like, experimenting with, you know, you see people with the pipettes and stuff, and it's yeah. bloody one or two drops does make a big difference. I used to think that was nonsense as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then 
it was literally two drops. And you go, wow, that's I was, totally different. I was in here with, it was a training night, but I can't remember who was doing training. And it was before my time in the sales, and I thought, Thursday night, an excuse for a night out. And we came in here. It was <laughs> a long time ago, remember. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> um, and we came in here, and it was Donald said, uh, it, was, it was actually a green whiskey that I accepted. It was my first try with green whiskey. And Donald says, I had to drop the water, it'll really open yeah. it up for you. I said, oh, that's nonsense. And he took a pipette and did it for me. He says, sip it. And yeah, it was like opened up massively. And I was, okay, right, I get that. Still wasn't to my taste, that particular yeah. one. But yeah, that really did make a difference. But it, it does. It's all the learning. Yeah. It's all in learning and getting to know these things. It, and even with that too, like, you might, you, you might actually find if you added a bit more that you might have liked uh, it, or it might have gone the other way for some times. As you said, it can go, ah, oh, oh, I've added too much to it. Mm-hmm. You can always add more whiskey. Never works. <laughs> no. That's what I actually tried it that way. No, it never, <laughs> it never works. Never so, works. Well, you don't, you don't do it with your diluting juice, so no. <laughs> <laughs> you can't add more, more juice after you've added too much water. <laughs> so going on about with these whiskies as well, um, I know you've got a few trips coming up, but I will be too, and so will you. Yes, so, where, uh, so where are we heading? Seriously, where are, I have no idea where we're heading. I'm <laughs> lying over your head. <laughs> you know, first, you're going um, next week. I am. I'm going to Belgium next week, and I've got a tasting every night. Um, when, does, when does this video go out, though? Is this... Oh, yeah. So I'll, I'll have been in Belgium um, last week or two weeks ago. <laughs> I'll have been in Belgium, and hopefully everybody's came to see me. Uh, and then I'm following on. So after this video, I'm going to go out to Paris for the Dugas show with our importers. Um, I'll also be doing a club tour that we've not actually announced yet. Um, Carly's going to come along with us. She's in for an experience. It's kind of like a surprise <laughs> the background there. It's kind of shit. <laughs> so we're kind of just waiting on the final um, sort of details and we'll get that announced. Uh, but we're hoping to be in a, a few countries over the course of a week just to meet club members and do a bit of tasting and chit chat. Um, then we're going to Canada, so we're going out to Canada to see Andy, uh, and he's setting up an itinerary. I think we'll be at a festival out there as well. Good. Before hitting the Hague again, Cameron, so that's, that's, that's your crime. Go <laughs> to the Hague. <laughs> uh, so Cameron's been there before. I, w- I was there in the early days just to get a bit of experience with you. I think 2017, 2018. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be back there before joining Planet Spirits at the Whiskey Journey in Singapore wow. and on to Taiwan with a Spiritus after that as well. So that takes me up to the end of the year. You're quite a busy year. Busy schedule. For a change. <laughs> Don't say that. Yeah. Well, I'm going to Austria at the beginning of October. Um, then I've got Belgium with Spirits in the Sky, the usual. So that's one of my favourite festivals. That one. This is the first time I've been in Austria for quite a number of years as well, so I'm quite looking forward to that. And then it's going to be my first trip to Milan. Hey, to Italy, sorry. Yeah. I've got the Milan festival. Yeah, Milan. I've always wanted to go to Italy. So that's good. I've done it years ago. Uh, it was Jenna said to I'm going to you fancy Milan this year. I. <laughs> it was like, yeah, definitely going. So that's a good show. It's been years since I've been there. That's a cracking show. It was back then. So. so I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, for work purposes, of course. Um, not trying to see if I can get a game, uh, see if any of the football at the San Siro you know, or anything. But no, um, it's it's quite good as well to get to to new countries as well and see what the festivals are like there mm-hmm. too. You're getting on the road again. Oh, the UK, yes. Uh, so yeah, start September. Uh, down in Newcastle uh, for the Indie Whiskey Love Festival, uh, Carl Glenn Show, and then... That looked pretty good last year, actually. Yeah, it was a cracking show last year, well organised, um, and a nice brewery and stuff, so... Um, so that's a great angle for myself, coming back into the Cadenheads, uh, getting an opportunity to go about the UK with Cadenheads, mm-hmm. so... And Hitting the tune instead of the weed tune. Uh, that's mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, we to Aberdeen, obviously the roots of Cadenheads as well, so yeah. that's Aberdeen. Uh, that's the uh, Gareth Crow uh, Festival up there, so International Whiskey Festival up there. When's that? When's that? Uh, so, Newcastle's the first weekend, and then Aberdeen the second weekend in September. Okay. 
and uh, just signed up for a festival at Edinburgh Murrayfield today, so that'll be pretty good. Uh, so October, I'm uh, heading up to Murrayfield. Not to play rugby, unfortunately, but uh, to try cold whiskey. Yeah, you're thinking on about for the rugby <laughs> days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, also been in Glasgow Whiskey Festival in November. It's a must-do event. Uh, well organised at Hamden. And I am probably taking Carl and Jess along to that show as well. Yes. Does Carly know that one as well? Yep, she does. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, quite drum bastard as well in November. Autumn freeze. Autumn freeze. Yeah, so yeah, there's got a lot coming up, and that's just the festivals. Also, they're looking at the uh, club stuff as well. Uh, we also, in between that as well, um, in about five weeks' time, mm-hmm. we also have our Cadnades in the Courtyard event, which. Um, we are very hopeful we'll be all set in time. Um, the well, we've got it. it'll be... It's, it's, it's looking great outside. We, could, we pull, we've seen... It pull always, off. yeah. yeah. Um, and we've been... Behind the scenes, we are going to be doing something that we've kind of hinted at, um, which is known as the vault, which will be a kind of... We do want a bang. We do want a bang, yeah, that's the... Right. Fortunately, we didn't, we, didn't <laughs> get the, we didn't get the money inside it, though, but... Uh, it will be like similar to what we did with the Cadnets cage takeover many years ago. Well, Since we did, don't have a cage anymore, yeah, um, we do have a vault. We've got a vault, <laughs> though. so we are going to try something a bit different, and uh, probably it's going to be more of a, a without stealing another whiskey festivals um, theme. It's going to be a bit more relaxed atmosphere. We're looking to have a, 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 a so that it's not going to be too. It's going to be a bit more fun, I think. And of course, some ideas and some things that we're doing for it that, without giving too much away, um, that hopefully the the end of coming to visit will will yeah. enjoy. I'm actually looking forward to the the club taste the night before as well. Okay. We the, do. We've got that um, set up. I think there's some spaces still available. There should be. I would imagine yeah. so. Carly's nodding there. Yeah, there's still <laughs> some spaces. Um, we've got a few good surprises for that. Yeah, I think that'll. Work quite well. It's something we've not done before. Again, keeping with that theme, relaxed and a wee bit more enjoyable, fun. That's what you've got to do. It's just it's all about enjoying, mixing together and having a drama too. So. Well, we don't actually have any ideas yet, but in the two weeks' time <laughs> before this comes out, I'm sure we'll have the ideas. We've got, we've got the idea <laughs> well, when this goes live, I think it'll be two and a half weeks. Oh, no, don't say that. Oh, yeah, of course. I'm forgetting. I'm saying it's going to be five weeks, but. but yeah, I'm supposed to hear. <laughs> This is the last thing we're, we're pre-recording. Yeah, this is, <laughs> well, this is how organised. Normally, I was like, it's getting released tomorrow. <laughs> so yes, uh, whiskey number five. This is from Tamdu Distillery. Uh, 15 years old, and again, under the original collection label. And there's a weird and wonderful explanation of this one as well, Jenna. Yeah, this took a bit of discovering as well, this one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so it's spent around 12, 13 years in bourbon, the first 12, 13 years in bourbon, before going into fresh all and also for a, around two years. And then back into bourbon again, so just taking that wee bit more care and consideration um, for its final year before we were, it got married together for bottling. So I believe the, the sherry was quite active um, and uh, the, putting it back into bourbon just helped me really mellow this one out. Pr- pretty much similar to the, the Glen Berkey there. It's just a complete coincidence we've got two similar like that in the same release, mm-hmm. one after the other in the tasting too. Um, Tam do as well. Um, when we got the casks, um, they were in about sort of second, third fill, maybe fourth fill bourbon to be honest with you. Um, they needed a little boost. They weren't like horrific or anything like that. They, just, they were maybe a bit youthful. They needed a bit of body. The casts that they put into were actually quite active. And Tam doing sherry is actually quite good. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you've got to be careful it's not too similar to the actual distillery, distillery the bottle because yeah. it kind of defeats the purpose. You want to do something different. Yeah. So bringing it back slightly was the was the idea. And after this time, we thought it went really, really well. It was just a complete coincidence that we're both in the same release. You both you filmed both of these <laughs> things. And it made it more difficult to explain it. But it was because we wanted to just try and sort of mellow it out slightly from... Um, it had enough of the sherry characteristics. It still had the... You could still tell it was whiskey as well, whereas it wasn't just going to be too overpowering. 
I think it's got that nice balance of it. A very good balance of it. Again, yes, it's big, it's bold. That sherry and thing that also definitely stands out. But there is still a lot of whiskey coming through. The oiliness that's coming through in this one as well. Yeah. It's really taking on a lot of the oil also. It's actually got some of the bourbon characteristics back in it. Mm-hmm. It's quite funny because it doesn't always necessarily look how it tastes. It's actually got... Yeah. But it was not like that originally. That is from going into the bourbon casks. Okay, there's lots of sherry in there. There's not any sulfur. You know, it's yeah, that kind of warm up, you know. I give Finley's age juice. He's getting some good quality casks in as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, we're a good supplier. I mean, Miguel Martin, we get the casks from the sherry casks. You know, he supplies a lot of the, the big companies too. A, you know, especially some of the ones that we've, we've done that we've never done in the past. The Manzanillas, the Palo Cotados, the, the Finos, etc. You know, they've, they've been tremendous. And along with obviously the Dolorosos and the PXs too. But also, Tam does quite a, a bold spirit. You know, so it was one that we knew could handle the Dolorosos. Because um, again, they, they, they do that with their own style. Whereas maybe some some distillery styles, maybe it might be too much. You maybe do it with a, with a refill, but we thought the first fill would be, would be okay with that as well. No, I think this one works really well, actually. Mm-hmm. And this will be the first time do we've had an original collection. It is, like, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, maybe from the old original collection from... Grand, you might know. <laughs> <laughs> from the 1800s. <laughs> You'll remember those days. Ah, oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, It's also just like being here as well. Like, see the setting we're in now? You know, the, the taste in them is looking really good too. I think this is a set that we're going to try and do maybe even like more intimate events. Um, we've got um, our bar operations manager, David Wood too, who is looking to sort of set up kind of tastings along with, with, with Jenny and Scott as well. And, you know, like bring people in like for maybe special tastings during the week, during night yeah, time. Yeah, there's, well, what are they doing here? Because, you know... There's a lot of whiskey that's coming up here. Why not do evening dinner, yeah. evenings, tastings as I follow them? We've got the space here. And David just texts and says, don't stop giving me more work. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it is, and we've got the, the venue for it, the setting. And once we've got the courtyard too, you know, it will be a setting that people can come out. And not just for the whiskies. You can come, you can have a cocktail with her. Using the old Raj gin. And, um, <laughs> I mean, you might not believe it, but it is actually a glorious evening. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, it's outside. actually it's beautiful outside. Um, so, yeah, for great setting outside, for sitting outside and having a few drams. Oh, well, we've got cocktails the, the wine in as well. Wine, the wine and the light bites are pretty good because I'm down here quite often. <laughs> I've, I've probably spent a lot of my time at lunchtime here getting yeah. the, the lawn soup and uh, lawn soup is tremendous all the time. I love the, uh, the chicken tikka crunch. The well, that's, that's, that's good. Sandwich, I've been uh, eating yeah. a lot of that too. And even though it's light bites, I don't think it's all that light. No. <laughs> it's it's quite, so we've film. got food, we've got whiskey, wine, do, do we go and here? sun and sun as well. <laughs> you know, oh, what do you want? That's a... Seats and tables out outside were were laughing. Yeah, the chairs alive last week actually for outdoors. But not outdoors ready for it, but the seats have arrived. They're not far away, I don't think, especially in that section. Mm-hmm. But I think we've got some, we'll, we'll be posting some, I think Carly's got a, 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 an archive of pictures, she's looking at me, mm-hmm. don't, <laughs> <But> she does, <laughs> of, of before and after shots as well, um, so it, it, will be, it will be good, and I think a lot of people who will be coming to visit have been before, they're seeing the continual changes, and, um, that we are trying to kind of not stand still, kind of evolve all the time. The theme ties in with... Hamilton, Edinburgh, and London, <coughs> all the shops within the UK and bar have got the green yeah. and orange theme. Uh, and I'm Capica. sure. Paprika. <laughs> 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 uh, but no, and everybody's commenting how well a shop in Edinburgh's looking. Yeah. London, what was it done in London last year under the grief it done there? Whoever did the, the job in Edinburgh should get a pay rise. Hey, <laughs> 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 <In> London, so. <laughs> and Edinburgh, too. <laughs> uh, I don't think they should. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Only because yeah. I wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, so they, you know, the, the theme of the three shops in the bar, yeah, fantastic. No, it's looking really good and it's, it's taking a bit of time to get here, but now we're here and it's it's up and running. And I think as well, it's maybe not so easy to get to Campbelltown most of the time, but I believe you're trying 
quite hard to get. Um, I think London are doing more tastings now. That yeah, so they've uh, so they, soon we will be looking at uh, being able to book them via our website, which will be a great uh, asset as well because more and more inquiries about the tastings, so we can book them through the Cadnet website. Uh, so we're looking into that just now. Uh, it's different, so we know exactly when they can do them. We've got no, two different rooms in London. We've got a smaller intimate taste in upstairs, and they've got a kind of larger room downstairs that can seat maybe 10, 12 people and stuff. So, it's and a lovely set as well. And, you know, Sean's uh, doing great canopies as well. Yeah. The food down there is really good. And it complements the whiskies and stuff as well. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's looking tremendous. And, uh, again, that's like looking at is. You know, there's a lot of whiskey clubs in, in, in London, and I'll be going down to do, probably doing a bit more on the road regarding sampling new, new releases and stuff as well. So, um, why not utilise that room and not just for visitors and members and stuff like that? Do it for upcoming releases and stuff. But, you know, the people who, the club members, uh, is you know, a great asset to the company and is interesting in what's coming available. If we can go down and do some club members tasting and stuff as well, huge part of it. And even then, like going there, um, Brian, Luke, and the two Sean's as well will always be very welcome and, and, and do great tastings as well in that venue too. Mm-hmm. So, um, for those that you might know as well, uh, not know as well, we've actually just purchased even more buildings around the area. Where across the road, we've just purchased the. Um, it was a garage. It was a garage. Yeah, the the gentleman that owned it is now retired. So. We thought, well, do you know what? That's quite handy. It's close to us, so we've not quite decided exactly what's going to get done with it. But it's a it's a large area. There's always a plan in place of some sort, and we know mm-hmm. over the next two years we'll be able to expand some way or another because we've, we've now purchased that building. So it's it's what we do yeah. when we do it. It's uh, but no, it, it's something that we we can utilise as well mm-hmm. because we've got the complex here too. There's another kind of um, strength our boat over there. It's good over the last couple of months since the festival, the Malts Festival, and uh, being able to use this properly because we just launched it the week of the yeah, Malts month, month Festival. Uh, having visitors way. here and, and actually bringing them to a place just, just for cabinets and, and not piggybacking off the distillery at all. Um, we're of, of course, we've got the, the bottling line up there and our own bottling line where all, all our bottlings go down the, with the pony machines and it like, creates that. that job because we need someone at every part of the the line um, and of course spring bank using the automatic one but it needs just as many people so so we're, we're still our own identity and we've got our own complex now so it's kind of been growing ever so slightly yeah. over the years and i think over the next two years you'll see that moving forward it's well. it's, it's, you know we're on about everyone's getting bought hand bottles and stuff like that and something we'd want to show people people yeah. make the effort come down here well, we're saying we're using old fashioned pony machines as well. Why not show people? You know, so uh, it's something that I look forward to in the future and opening that up. I was in uh, with the, the whiskey school where in the bottling hall before I grabbed them earlier and uh, Katrona was showing them down the line and because uh, I was just about to start bottling some cabinet products. And she was explaining, right, this is it getting filled, and then we'll take it by hand, and we we'll put the corks in. He says, "Oh, do you, do you use a mallet?" Oh, well, I've got one there, but generally just push them in. Here you go, and like it's, it's quite tight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, if you think if you did that for what, that was five thousand bottles that we had for the the blended scotch. You get you get four arms to fall by after that one, I think. <laughs> no, it's, it's not not quite as easy, but there's a lot of. A lot of care that's taken into putting these bottles together. Yeah. There's a lot more effort, I think, that goes into the whole place and maybe people realise. And it's something we've tried to show over the years as well. I think um, there is appreciation from everyone as well. We kind of know what we do. That um, It's not just a case of a few people. Are, they're probably cabin heads, given a, a, a small, a, a kind of rough estimate here, but there's probably about 40 to 50 people that would be involved in our process mm-hmm. you know like, even though like um, we share a lot of uh, our colleagues with the distillery you know a lot of those ones will be doing jobs for cadden heads and kind of tasks as well that the problem is a, a good sort of 40 50 people employed by it well i think even if you look my mum will say well when, when she was younger at one point i think if you speak to many locals they'll have worked in the spring bank or yeah. jamie mitchell bottling hall 
So is this the last one? This is the last one, yes, yes. it is. Cheers. Again, I mean, this actually lineups. there's a lot of talk about between all the six whiskies. Um, so I was like, we're moving on to the last one, and it's the Campbellton Blended Malt, 15 years old. I think, can I great story? This is, um, and I think this one, we, we were actually quite fortunate to get this one too. Um, it was created by um, the Springbank team. Um, I think it was, it was to have another purpose, but I, I think they either used what they needed for or they, they could be using a, a different blend or whatnot. But they had this spare stock that they didn't really, they couldn't really utilise for themselves. You've worked with Springbank yourself and you know, you know that sometimes there's maybe, sometimes you can have too little stock yeah. to use. And it's, well, we can't really do this for a purpose. We need probably bigger volumes or whatnot. But that's where we can sometimes come in and go, we'll uh, it. I can utilise that. Yeah, we'll utilize um, it. And it's also quite good, this one, um, because there is a lot of Campbellton blended malt that's going around. But this one's very different to the to the kind of the casks that have been, um, that maybe some other companies have got. Because this one's only got two single malts from Campbellton. And it's actually... Um, Hazelburn and Kilcairn mixed together. So it's quite unique, that one. It's 15-year-old Hazelburn, and it's actually got some 16-year-old Kilcairn in it as well. Again, Kilcairn's quite a light style because of the distillation process, and the angles of line up, line up do complement each other together very well. well. I mean, the filling store, and it's so fruity. As soon as you walk in, you just get all that, that smell. From. What's the strength this one? Come up with that. So it's gas strength at 48.2. So this one is going to be in the Enigma bottle as well so in the dark green bottles with it in okay. my release because well we do know a little bit more about this one but with it being a blended malt it, it was a bit not a single yet. malt one only distillery so it will be put into the enigma release and um you'll notice there's different colors within the the, the, the crosses as well like that that's to give the different commodities whether it be a, a single malt or a blend or a blended malt or um Whatever the green one is there. Single That's a single malt, malt yeah. Single malt, yeah. Um, we've got maybe world whiskies, green whiskies. I always miss one. Yeah, sure. that, I think that was it. World green blended, blended scotch, yeah. blended malt. So we're kind of we've got a, an option for everything. Yeah. Keep it quite open. And again, there is going to be in the future some more kind of clues to what um, they actually will be um, as well. When it comes to these ones. Um, with the blends, it was slightly different, but with if the single malts, there'll be a bit more of a um, a way to work it out, shall we say, without giving things away. And it gives another two weeks to work out how to do it as well. That's it. <laughs> gives so, it more fun to, yeah. to kind of enjoy it and give you a clue to what it is. It's it's very easy just to put a distillery name on the label. Yeah. And, and also with the um, um, the QR codes as well, you know, we can give a lot of hints and. and to, to when it actually came from too. But that's why we were very fortunate to get hold of, but there's no way it was knocking this back. Um, but we still, we actually got quite a few kits. Well, yeah, so there's 3,306 bottles yeah. from this operation. Again, all matured in bourbon hogsheads. I think there was a mix of fresh and refilled bourbon between this mm -hmm. and the, like on the nose, this is so fresh. Yeah, I've got that fruitiness mm -hmm. bourbon. Uh, very tropical, tropical fruit. Yeah. You get a lot of that with the kind of spring bank. So here's the one running all over it. Yeah. yeah. Hazel burn, older hazel burn and bourbon. It's very hard to beat. Yeah. And quite an underrated whiskey. Even the strength works perfectly. Uh, I mean, okay, it's nearly forty six percent, but it's a cracking strength. There's no alcohol spirit. You know, it's there too, but whatsoever. Yeah, just slightly higher for, the, for their own bottlings, but it's, it seems to work. I suppose that's why we did it. Yeah. It's a good launch too as well. But as I said, we'll see more of the you'll see more of these coming out in the future too. Um we'll explain a bit more about it. And I think again it's something that's a bit more fun, a bit more um a bit different to what we, we, we normally do. And again, it's it's quite funny as we said before. It's it's something new but it's also a throwback to the past as well. So it's you want to give that, take out that kind of pretense with whiskey, whether it be the name of the distillery, the colour of the whiskey, you know, the region or whatever. Yeah. But you, 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 the region would be on it. So, but like the, 
you want to make sure that it's all about the flavour and what's actually in it rather than, yeah, it's because it's certain distillery, it's because it's certain cast type. And I think that's, I think this could be hopefully a successful range yeah, as well. Yeah, that counts. It counts all over this one. Yeah. Uh, no, compliments this whole tasting. Really. Well, I think as you can tell with the with the bottle, what was left in it, I think um, the guests that we had that tried it, it was um, it was, it was well received. Well received indeed. No, I think I think you just dropped it down last week, and I went and collected it from the bar the other day. So unless a few other people's been dipping into it, there might be a <laughs> few other people. That's, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Enjoying it and sampling it. I think, it, and and that's. You know, part of these having these samples around, it's getting to know the product and what they're like because we'll be out on the road as, as we've just discussed with most of these. Well, I'm going to take some even of these the staff have got in shop, but you know, the best way, yes, we can do these product sheets and you'll see these available product sheets are available with taste and all the stuff. But educating the staff members, you know, the best way to try it, try it himself. And there will be ones that will stick in your mind. Oh, I really like that Ruby Port one or yeah. the Camelot blends, uh, and yeah. You can read it on that paper. It's it's even when, when, when we came down to set up, um, Scott that works in the bar was like, oh, what's this? An Edna range. Because we obviously, we're a bit early yet, we haven't explained it to, to the staff yet and our colleagues. And so um, he was quite intrigued mm. by it initially, even just by the um, by the bottles as well. So it's something that, again, we will be doing a lot more of as well. I'm going to take the Enigma to most shows that I'll be at over the next few yeah, months. Yeah, because these are not out when I go to Newcastle or um, Aberdeen, but I will try and get samples yeah. to, to, to tease people. You can try it, but you can't buy it yet. It's, it's on, well, launch from the 15th yeah. of September in the so, UK. So um, but then the, the whole release um, that we've tasted tonight is within the tasting packs. Good memory. Uh, <laughs> And then, obviously, it'll make its way out to markets all over the world yeah. from the beginning of September. So, depending on transit times and by the time it goes through the launches, but we'll we'll try and keep uh, I'll try and keep in contact and maybe put more information out to club members and things. We'll, it's something we want to do. A bit we'll, more. we'll keep everybody um, notified as well through mm -hmm. either the, the club emails, social, social, and social media, media etc. Yeah. So that we will be um, keeping more um, keeping it everybody updated on it too. Uh, we're getting change days. Organised. <laughs> no, um, again, thank you all very much for um, listening and watching as well. Um, it's the first time we've, we've tried this. I think hopefully it might not be the might not be the last one, or it might be depending <laughs> once we look back at it, Same. or how much editing um, Nathan and Carly have got to do. We did plan for forty five minutes. And I don't think yeah. Once you've edited another hour and 20 minutes <laughs> of that meeting. But no. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, thanks very much. No. Slash. Slash. Slash.